Hey humans, Lyric here. I'm a non-binary pale-skinned human with green, yellow, and purple hair that has shaved sides, and the undercut is purple and teal right now. I am holding a rainbow pastel stuffed fluffy dog that is fairly large clasped to my chest. I am petting him because he is nice and soft. This week, I'm going to talk about being autistic and sensory seeking and my experience with that as an autistic person. If you are curious at all about sensory seeking, please stay tuned as we dive in. As we dive in and talk about sensory seeking, it's first important to point out that this is going to be around all of the senses. So we've got the sense of touch, the sense of sound, hearing, sight, smell, taste, feeling your body in motion in space, and your sense of balance. These are all senses that are affected by sensory processing. In autistic people, our senses seem to be either heightened, where we are more sensitive to certain things, or less sensitive to certain things. For example, I tend to be a lot less sensitive to pain than other people, but some autistic people may be more sensitive to pain. I also struggle to regulate temperature and am really sensitive to temperatures. I struggle with other senses such as lighting. Lighting is a big one for fluorescent lighting. Actually, if I spend too much time around it, it will give me migraines, seizures, and other physical health problems. So lighting is a sense I avoid. However, I am a very tactile, seeky person. And though there are certain kinds of clothes that if I wear it, it feels like fire ants are biting my skin, I often will seek out soft, fluffy things and enjoy sensory seeking with something that is soft and enjoyable. This dog is soft and enjoyable because one, he's tactile. Two, it's something I can squeeze to my chest and feel snugness with. And then also, he's full of beans, which make a very soft, relaxing noise when I squeeze him. So nice. My senses are a bit paradoxical sometimes. I often will not be able to tolerate sounds that other people are in control of or are making, but I myself can be a very loud and obnoxious human. I constantly will fill the room with sounds, talking and singing to myself if I am finding myself in silence, or I will maybe jump up and spin around and move. When I was a young person, this could look like me bouncing off of sofas and climbing on top of furniture to seek the sense of movement and feeling my body in motion. I really like roller coasters. Some autistic people cannot handle carnival rides and get motion sickness. I don't tend to be that autistic person most of the time. I seek out that feeling that gives a lot of people motion sickness and it feels fantastic to me. All of this sensory seeking has very practical applications. For example, I sometimes feel as if my senses are not working the way they should. My hands can feel very far away and I can feel a bit disconnected from my body and discombobulated and out of sorts for lack of a better word. I get this feeling that Everything and everyone is so far away. And being in touch with my senses, sitting here and, you know, stimming, stroking this ear of this dog with my finger and feeling the tactile sense keeps me a bit more grounded and aware of my body so that it doesn't seem so far away. If I am struggling emotionally or I am 
not, you know, mentally in a good space that I want to be in, I can intentionally put on some music and listen to music, sing along to music, dance along to music, put on my roller skates and spin and spin and spin in circles for hours or even just a few minutes getting lost in the sensory experience and getting myself out of my own head. Really, if it's even just five minutes, it can be so helpful because I am someone who can also be very obsessive. I can struggle to let things go. It's nice to have something that I know I can turn to if I am spiraling and stuck in my own head and need to get out of it. And it's like, oh, let's engage in some sensory seeking. The sensory seeking, like holding a stem toy under the table or sharing David the dog with you. I named him after David, my partner, because David gave me David the dog. Uh, sharing this with you and bringing David here, did David the dog here. This is weird. <laughs> this is a mild sensory input. Whereas if I was more anxious, more amped up and more stressed out, I might want more intense sensory seeking, going for a run or going for a swim, jumping in a lake, depending on how much relief I need at the given moment. Something else I have noticed about myself since I learned I was autistic almost five years ago and have started to allow myself more sensory seeking and actually intentionally adding more sensory experiences that recharge and invigorate me in my life is I feel a lot more balanced in my mind body energy for lack of a better way to explain that when I am dysregulated it feels like there is just too much energy flowing through me and my body can't handle it when my brain is overcharged and my body hasn't been moving and I've been sitting in a desk for eight to twelve hours every day and I don't ever move it's like if you're overcharging an electronic device, I imagine I am an overcharged electronic device or something and I need to go out and physically move to get some of that energy out. Yeah, I gotta go do it. I gotta move. Now that I've been doing that a lot more, I, I feel a lot better. I sleep better. My health is better. Uh, a lot of things in my life are a lot better now that I'm being a lot more intentional and adding more motion and positive kinds of sensory input into my day. Another thing I've noticed with that is I actually stim less. Not that stimming is a bad thing. So there's nothing wrong with stimming. It's how my body responds to having extra energy in my body. So if I'm excited, I'm more excited. I'm going to move more if I have more energy in my body. If I am having less energy in my body because I am getting extra energy out more regularly, my body is just a lot more still unless I happen to get a burst of energy. Maybe I get a little burst of nerves, I get a little anxious, or I get some surprise and I get a little anxious about that, or uh, maybe something awesome happens and I get some energy and I get stimmy, 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 stimmy. Uh, that is because the energy level went up before when I just wasn't really well regulated there was just a lot of extra static floating around extra energy I wasn't burning off and sensory seeking has really been helpful for me personally with that okay humans this week we talked about sensory seeking I am thinking about doing sensory avoiding for next week so stay tuned because now that I've said it, I'm pretty sure I have to do it. So we'll talk about sensory avoidance next week. Be sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. If you're on Patreon, you probably got this video at least a month early. YouTube channel members, same thing goes with you. Or if you're subscribing on Facebook. That's just a little way I say thanks to the supporters of this blog who helped me to create this content. I have web hosting and transcriptioning software and all of these things I wouldn't possibly be able to be providing without the help of viewers like you. I am so incredibly grateful for each and every one of you, whether you're subscribing monetarily or 
engaging here, giving video suggestions, submitting your questions, comments, sharing. I'm glad you're here. Even if you're learning, I'm glad you're here learning. You are so important. And this blog would be nothing without all of the readers, viewers, and helpers that are here in the internet. So thank you all with my great, greatest gratitude for each and every one of you. I will see you next week. Bye, humans.